now let us look at the intro rules for the universal quantifier and exist quantifier so here is the rule if let's suppose you have f t available to you then you can you know that uh, the f is true on some term then what you can do you can say that there exist in y f y only restriction here is y should not be as a free variable in this formula f z what is z then uh, z is a fresh variable which is uh, you use it to just identify a placeholder where the t is going to leave and the y is going to come so when you take uh, t out then there should be no way that the y appearing in this formula again anywhere and then when you put the y in then y comes in and then you can existentially quantify if y, if y was already present in fz then you are in trouble you cannot really bring in y and then do the exist y important thing to note is there are two more side conditions here often not explicitly written okay what are those side conditions since you have done two substitution in this proof rule so when you wrote, wrote ft it means there was an implicit formula fz maybe some z for some z such that you take took z out and put the t in right and similarly when you wrote fy you took on the same formula took z out and you substituted by fy okay so now it is important that you remember that when you do that there is a issue here okay substitution not all substitutions are defined so when you're doing this these substitutions should be defined or, or suitability requirement we saw in earlier must be satisfied okay so please be mindful of these side conditions and they may not be always written if you read a lot of literature a lot of books or uh, some documentation of the first order logic in various provers this side condition is not explicitly stated okay so please be uh, be aware of this and whenever you're applying a proof rule you need to make sure that this condition is satisfied okay how it is going to work okay from hx you can derive hx I, now i have an evidence hx is true then i can say for there is some y for which hy so the x left and y came in and you can see that both substitutions are possible uh, y is not a free variable in fz so therefore you can do this let's look at the few ways you can violate this condition so here is an example let's suppose you know x is equal to 1 y equals to 2 and for some reason you can derive x not equal to y it's your premise okay? let's suppose you have this derivability okay? we want to show you that exist intro applying in this situation may not work let's suppose you want to take this x out and bring y in okay so, and then write exist y y is not equal to y you can see that this formula uh, was not potentially satisfiable and this clearly unsatisfiable so this cannot be uh, in right derivation and the violation is happening is that y is in the free variables of this formula now let us see um, uh, another way you can do bad derivation then you took uh, when the substitution was disallowed okay so look at this formula okay uh, you have a some formula and you're deriving itself from it using assumption now you have this formula and you have this c you have an evidence that, that this for something is true on c so what you can do take the c out and reduce a fresh variable right how can we do that uh, what you cannot do is uh, you cannot use the same variable y which is being used as a quantified variable here where the c was occurring okay so now uh, what you did is that you had this fz okay so fz you chose this guy and the, when you put the c there it was my original formula and when you wrote fy you did a substitution which was a wrong substitution it's not defined substitution okay so it makes no even syntactically doesn't make sense but you did it anyway and therefore you got it wrong okay? so this is another reason things can go wrong for you okay? now let us look at one more example when uh, this third substitution we do uh, when fz to t when you uh, when you start from uh, antecedent you have uh, ft and that is not defined okay how can you go wrong let us suppose you have this uh, 
formula derived from sigma and uh, you you took this f of x out and put the y in yeah? and uh, you can easily check that this this formula says uh, that there exists an y for all x right so basically they're saying that exactly one element is out there but this formula doesn't say that yeah? why this derivation is wrong because uh, you had to uh, pick a f z okay and the, your choice of f z was this and then when you did took z out and put f x in at that time you violated the uh, the defineness of uh, uh, substitution therefore this uh, derivation is not allowed so important point is that uh, when you have an antecedent and the consequence okay, you have f t is appearing in the antecedent and f y is appearing in the consequence uh, we don't have fz given to us fz is our choice we make a choice of fz and then we apply the rule okay and uh, if we don't explicitly and cleanly identify fz which satisfies all these side conditions we may do wrong steps okay? so be careful when you do this okay here is another example in which the derivation is okay but it may not look okay at the first sight okay so let's look at this uh, formula okay and let's suppose for some reason we know it's true okay uh, i have this gc and the gc here right so this is this this is going to be my term t and i want to only replace this guy not this guy i don't want to replace this guy we replace it with a fresh variable uh, let's call it x1 and uh, when we do that we get uh, x1 uh, x2 quantified and then you have x1 here but this term was not replaced okay? so you may be wondering how this is even allowed okay? so uh, the thing is you need to choose fz in your choice of fz what you did is that you only one of them are replaced by z other one is left one okay and now you can see the rule can be applied satisfactorily in all check all these three condi side conditions and you will see it all worked out so therefore this derivation is correct so this was the exist introduction okay now let's see how can we do the introduction for for all so we have seen the following proofs in our life okay so the proof is like you choose some x to represent some number and uh, you prove some fact on x and since you have chosen x freely without any restriction then you can make a statement this is true for all x yeah, this is very common pattern in your proof the important point is there's explicit statement some point of time you say okay this is new x it has not been referred in the past and nobody else knows it now uh, now we have introduced it now you can refer to it yeah so this fresh choice is basically represents the uh, you ability to introduce for all so how can we translate that as a proof proof okay uh, so the simple requirement would be that that variable is not referred anywhere else well that's will be the trick okay and then it must be true for every value in the universe so that is the for all intro okay so uh, how it works you have let's suppose f of x it's not f of t it's not for arbitrary term it's only for it is it's only applicable on variables for now you know you're introducing y here right so again the same as exist case when you bring a new variable in you have to make sure that that variable does not occur freely in that formula otherwise you cannot just introduce a quantifier you will just make making a wrong move okay and uh, let's say x and z, z are variables remember z is a variable fresh variable to just you know as a placeholder for us to understand how substitutions are working and we also need this no reference condition this since it's a fresh x okay and uh, nobody else uh, can refer to it in sigma and when you take x out okay uh, from here all x's go out and then all places were replaced by y okay remember that in the exist case we don't take everybody out in the for all case we must take everybody out therefore there's a requirement uh, in this case when you write it as an fz x should not be there at all okay and again remember that fx and fy are the substitution that should be defined substitution it's not explicitly written here but it is an implicit assumption always okay so how are we going to use it uh, 
if let's suppose I have a hx and you can derive hx from it using assumption, we cannot just simply do for all here. Okay, this is will be wrong. Uh, why it is not allowed? Because there is x being referred on this side. Okay, so therefore this this move is not allowed. There are more ways you can apply for all rule. There's a one additional situation when you have a, some fact is on some constant c. Okay, and it, it is a function with uh, without any parameter. And you know that that constant doesn't appear in sigma on f z. Okay, then this constant can be taken out and replaced by a y, and you can say for all y. And the usual restriction y does not appear appear freely in f z is is applied still. Okay, and all the substitutions happening in are are valid sub defined substitutions. Okay, so we can do that. Okay, so for example, you can if you can derive h c. Okay. And you know that c does not appear anywhere in sigma, then you can say for all y such one. Okay? So that is the trick. Okay. But notice that this cannot be extended for arbitrary terms. Okay. Uh, so if you have this kind of uh, formula, you know hfc and not of fa. Okay. So you cannot just take out this term and replace with a z. Okay. Uh, you can only do do this for variables and constants. If they, you can try to do this arbitrary. Uh, terms then this step becomes wrong so now you're saying for all z h z not of f a which is not true because uh, uh, now z can be replaced by f a and you can see that this formula becomes unsatisfiable and while this was a sad formula so you cannot really derive a sad formula from a sad formula okay, that should not be happening you know this is a wrong derivation so we have defined a, a rule for introducing intro uh, cut so we have defined rules for introdu introducing exist and a rule for introducing for all. These rules have some side conditions. Some of them are subtle side conditions. Please pay attention while writing down the proof that those conditions are actually fulfilled.